Come with me to Port Morian Sandbar. I'm going to introduce you to this magnificent beach, how to find it, what to expect when you arrive there, and what makes it extra special, and also the challenges that it faces. Creating a sense of ownership for the sandbar is the key to its preservation. A little about this channel. In 2023, I decided it would be fun to visit all the beaches on Cape Breton Island. I believe that there are over 80. I don't know how long this is going to take, but today we're going to Port Morian Sandbar. Open up Google Maps and type in Phelan's Bar, Port Morian, Nova Scotia. There are two ways to get there. Which way you choose is personal preference. Grand Lake Roadway is 36 minutes and Morrison Roadway is 31 minutes. I prefer to take Grand Lake Road because there are more options if I need gas or want to stop at a drive through I think the roads are in better condition too, however there is more traffic. If you're not watching for it, you could easily drive right by and miss it. There are no signs. The land is owned by Nova Scotia Department of Natural Resources. There's nothing here besides beach and wilderness. No washrooms, change rooms, no picnic tables, benches, garbage bins. It's an unsupervised beach, no lifeguards, and cell phone service here is hit or miss. The beach goes by many names, Port Morian Beach, Morian Sandbar, Failings Bar, but officially it's recognized as Port Morian Beach, and it is a protected beach. Let's park and go down and have a look. There's Northern Head, Morian Bay, and South Head. Families with young children love this beach because during low tide the water is warm, incredibly shallow, and very safe for little ones. This mobile app that I use shows just how shallow the water can get during low tide. The waves are gentle. You feel enclosed and protected in this location. Compared to other nearby beaches such as Dominion and Big Glace Bay, Morian Bay is more deeply recessed into the land. In fact, it's over seven kilometers from the mouth of the bay to the sandbar. In the summer months, there are plenty of families here. It's absolute paradise. This particular visit was filmed during low tide in the month of September. And while I was there, I saw one lucky family with a preschooler. You will likely see some fishing gear washed up on the shore, as well as some driftwood. There's plenty of beach grass, which is so important for fighting erosion. The sandbar is approximately one kilometer in length. Despite being a protected beach, there are no signs informing the public of any restrictions. There's one sign about shorebirds, which in my opinion is too small to read. There's this old post that's clearly been here for a long time, but no longer has anything of value to say. It's not going anywhere though. She's here to stay. The road starts off looking like this.
and the further down you walk, the dirt road turns into a path. The further you go, the more obvious it is that you're on top of a sand dune. Fewer vehicles come out this far. At the end of the sandbar, there is a narrow channel of water. The water here gets deep fast and the current is strong. I read online some people fish from here. Someone decided to place a chair here. The rear of the sandbar is a salt marsh and home to many types of birds. A bird survey from 2001 recorded 22 shorebird species, making this place the most significant shorebird area in Cape Breton. I read online that during the winter, people actually skate here. Did you see that? I'll show you again. You can tell a lot about a sand dune by what you see growing. This one didn't make it. These are beach roses and rose hip. I don't know what that is. These are asters. This is some kind of golden rod, maybe? Challenges. Litter. During my visit, oh, there was a lot of garbage. Occasionally there are beach cleanups. The community gets together and cleans up the beach, but I don't think it's happened for a while and it's definitely due for another cleanup. Beach conservation. The effects of storms, as well as vehicles driving on the sand dunes are problems. The province has recommended building a parking lot and preventing vehicles from driving up on the sand dune, but I haven't seen anything that suggests that this is gonna happen anytime soon. So that's it for my visit at Port Morion Sandbar. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing. See you next time. Thanks. Bye.